uh, we're going to let Eugene take over in a minute here, but I have a few announcements to make. Oh, here comes somebody else. Um, first thing is we have an EMEA user group meeting on August 31st. So you should sign up and I'm going to paste the um, URL in the chat. If you are interested in a more EMEA uh, time zone friendly user group, we have a speaker, but I do not yet know what they're going to talk about. So trying to find that out so we can post an agenda. Um, I think we're imminently shipping Logstream 3.1. Uh, so maybe you'll see an announcement in your inbox about that uh, after the meeting, but I'm going to wait till tomorrow to announce it in the community so that more people are paying attention. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you might get a jump start on that. Um, I really appreciate the fact that folks have been working on threading conversations in the Slack. I, uh, I think that's working pretty well. Please do continue to try and set a good example and use the thread spool emoji for that and emoji related and this is something that um that our own ed uh suggested we do we're so we're going to launch a q a site sometime in the near future still working on some of the details there um but uh we are in the process of also trying to gather together common content, like stuff that people might wanna ask and answer so that we can make sure it's already there before we launch it. And in the interest of doing that, if you are on our community Slack and you uh, see a good question or a good answer or both, please tag it with uh, an emoji that I have named the clue bot. And it will uh, populate a private channel that we will then look at to uh, get information from. Like, we'll uh, we'll look at the, the content you tagged and potentially add it to the Q and A site. So, so yeah, that's those were all the announcements that I had. Take it away, Eugene. All right, as I, as I said, I'll take it away for all of ten seconds to welcome everybody to the August user group. So far, the only user group, but soon it won't be, so that's good. Uh, and welcome, ben Sebastian, to talk about testing security detection with Cribble Logstream. Go for it. Oh, all right. Yeah, I will. Uh, I did make some slides. They're pretty terrible, but I can uh, I can share them if that is helpful. Maybe. Doesn't hurt. Yeah, I mainly make slides so I don't forget to say things. So uh, they're not uh, good. So uh, yeah, so um, security law, I've been saying uh, security testing with Cribble. I often forget that App Scope exists um, because we don't use it at Cover My Meds, at least not yet. So uh, I'll say Cribble a bunch. I mean, Logstream. Uh, I feel like the people here will probably get it. Um, but anyway, just real quick, uh, me, I am a security engineer at Cover My Meds um, until Friday when I am moving to another company um, called Panther Labs, where I'll be creating detections uh, as part of their, their cloud-based sim. Um, I live in Columbus, Ohio, father, husband, nerd. If there's a nerdy hobby, I have it. I promise, like, you can't out-nerd me. I dare you to try. Um, and I put in here, hobbies include putting strange pictures into slide decks. This is the only way I can get a slide deck done is if I put dumb shit in it and to make myself laugh. Uh, sorry to swear on your report recording. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll just move through and kind of talk about uh, the kind of use case that we did and um, yeah, just go through it. I think it'll be a pretty quick talk and I'm happy to answer um, any questions that people have uh, at any point uh, or at the end. Um, so yeah, the problem that uh, we've had for a while, myself and the couple people here at, my, at Cover My Meds that write detections in this in the sim, uh, is how do we test them, right? So we can write a detection and think it's really good, and then an attack happens and maybe it doesn't fire, or more frequently, what happens is it fires all the time because we screwed it up, uh, and we get a million alerts that are false. So uh, there's also the you know, modifying the existing detections that ship with the SIM, um, things of that nature. You know, we always want to know that we're writing a detection that works, uh, but there's never a good way to do that. Our kind of standard way, if we could, uh, was that I would 
kind of one off, go find a piece of infrastructure and simulate an attack on it by hand and see if it tripped our tripped our alerting. So um, yeah, so not a great, not a great, uh, not a great situation to be in. So what we need, as I said, was a way to test those detections when we when we write it, a way to simulate an attack. Um, hopefully that's not just one of us going and attacking our own infrastructure, right? Like a more uh, time efficient way to, to test things. Um, and uh, yeah, so we weren't looking at Logstream for any of those reasons. Um, we were looking at Logstream uh, as a way to kind of cut down of our Splunk license because they're not cheap. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, strange endpoints that want to report to um, like the HTTP event collector, but we kind of wanted to centralize all those things in one place. So we were working on Cribble Logstream and I went through and did some of the tutorials that are on, on the site and realized that it was creating fake events. And I thought, well, crap, that's what we want, right? Like that that is the thing that we want. We want to be able to replay uh, an attack against our infrastructure so we can see if these detections work. So um, when I realized that, I thought this would be a good way to replay logs. So I had password spray on the brain, uh, mainly because we had been password spray as, sprayed as part of a pen test engagement that uh, no one told me about. And it freaked me out, right? Uh, especially when it didn't trip it tripped some alerts, but not the alerts that I expected it to trip. So I thought this was an easy way to to test the test it, you know, give it a proof of concept, right? Uh, if it will, if you will. Um, so yeah, um, I went out there. We use Okta for authentication. Um, I went and found a Python script that does uh, exactly that, right? Password sprays Okta. Um, it was old and not updated. Um, it was running on Python 2, and it didn't let me override the domain uh, because Okta has Okta.com. They also have OctaPreview.com, which is kind of a, a test tenant for people to use as they make changes to their production tenant. So um, I wanted to be able to spray the testing tenant uh, just to not interrupt prod for any reason. Um, and also, I didn't want it to stay in Python 2. So I forked it. I updated it. I did put a pull request back into the maintainer. Um, they have not replied. Uh, and it's been a couple months, so I don't think they're going to. Um, so there is a link there to uh, the updated uh, Okta password sprayer if anybody wants to uh, follow along with this, uh, with this test case. So you can grab it there. And uh, if you make a pull request on it, I promise to reply in a timely ma manner. Um, but it seems to work work pretty well. So um, what did I do? I kind of jumped ahead here. So fired up that script, gave it a list of completely fake users, um, just random human names at example.com, uh, and fired it off at our Okta tenant and collected the logs. Um, that was just you know an exercise in Splunk, went and found the events. Um, I cleaned them all up. Um, took out anything that was cover my meds specific so we could share it, um, you know, changed IPs and, and obfuscated some data, um, and then exported that as a CSV and shipped it into Cribble as a data gem. Um, from there, uh, created a pipeline that added a couple fields that uh, weren't dropped out in the table, uh, namely source and source type, which is what the detection, the built in Okta detections. Uh, in Splunk are built to key off of. Uh, so I created a, uh, created a pipeline, added those fields, um, and routed it to our uh, SIM cluster. Uh, and I did make a pack out of this. Uh, it was kind of me just trying to figure out how packs work. Um, I threw it up on GitHub, both the uh, decompressed version and the you know, compressed .cribble file that you can just throw up there. Um, in your Cribble instance, if you were so inclined, um, along with the uh, fake uh, user data that uh, you can use to simulate, or excuse me, fake uh, log events that you can use to uh, simulate a password uh, spray attack in your environment as well. And just a matter of creating the data gen and um, configuring it. I didn't want to go deep into this because I feel like 90% of the people on the call probably know how all that works. 
Um, but if you don't, uh, I linked my blog post that I wrote about this in the uh, Cribble Slack community. And uh, Rachel was nice enough to retweet that a couple places. So uh, it's out there um, if you want to take a look at it with a little bit more detail. Uh, but even then, Cribble docs are better than me explaining it to you, I am sure. Um, also, I made this meme just for you all. I'm just saying, you can have that for free. That's all yours. Um, so yeah, um, so after all that was done, I flipped the switch to enabled in, um, in Logstream and let that flow into our test sim to simulate a password spray attack. Um, it was really just like 10, 10 password attempts a minute um, for invalid users and uh, my detection didn't fire. So that was cool. Um, so right off the bat, realize that this detection does not work uh, like we th thought it did. And um, full disclosure, this detection is an out of the box detection that ships with, uh, ships with Splunk. Um, the only modification there is actually we've got, I've got that blocked out, but we add a filter to eliminate anything coming internally um, for these. But um, again, running that password simulated password spray, the detection didn't fire. And what we found was, whoops. Um, and what we found was the reason code that we were getting, if it's a valid user and they attempt to log in with bad, a bad password, then the message in the logs is invalid credentials. However, if someone is blindly password spraying your, uh, your Octa tenant and doesn't know, you know, does not have a, a valid list of your users, uh, you get a different error, right? So if someone's just kind of poking at the door without a lot of information yet, uh, instead of invalid credentials, you get a verification error in the logs. Uh, to, the, to the end user, that looks the same, right? It's obfuscated to say, so they can't enumerate the users. But for our, our purposes, we know that that means there's an invalid user. So even just POCing this out, we made a change to the production uh, detection to look for those verification errors. So it, it proved out the POC uh, right away, kind of accidentally, right? We found a bug uh, immediately in this detection uh, that left us kind of open, uh, kind of a blind spot to looking for, for these type of, you know, people attempting a, a foothold in the network. So um, yeah, it was, uh, it's not a very complicated, uh, complicated proposition that we're talking about, but it is uh, extremely useful for any kind of event simulation, right? If you can create a log of it, there's no reason that you can't create a data, export that data, create a data, data gen and uh, replay it back into your SIM or your test SIM or whatever it is uh, to work on your detections and fine tune them just to make sure that they, they do what you think they're going to do. Um, yeah, unfortunately that's, you know, I'd love to talk at y'all for like another half hour, but that's really kind of, it uh, it was simple. It was easy to do. Um, yeah, we've been a big fan of Cribble since we got it. Or excuse me, Logstream since we got it. Um, and this is just another another solid use case. I think, um, and I'm hoping other people will will use it for that. I think it's a spectacular way to test these things. So that's really the long and the short of it. My last dumb picture is the Riddler, and. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about that if, uh, if anybody has them. Come on, folks. Don't want um, to be shy. OK, so does the Splunk practice at your company go beyond security? Not, I'm going to say yes with a but. Not yes, but not as much as we would like. Um, it's mostly security use cases. Uh, we've got some people doing like monitoring, graphing, and that type of things. but. Most of our development staff really just uses it to troubleshoot and not really detect or anything. I, I was just curious because I floated the idea recently of uh, using data gens to test our Splunk alerting that's not security related. Um, because we have some folks who want to do uh, observability as code. Okay. They, they want to terraform their alerts into Splunk. And I'm thinking, okay, then there should be a test that goes along with every alert, right? You know the detection, you know your data. Let's data gen some stuff so that every time we change an alert, we can test it. So 
that's that's why I was excited to hear your talk because it kind of dovetails with that. Right on. Yeah, I think it would. I don't see why it wouldn't work for any Splunk alert, really, security or otherwise. I mean, you can, from what I've seen, you can make a gener data gen out of anything, and then it's just a matter of flipping the switch to on when you want to test it. And shout out to Eric uh, for telling me this was a good idea and I should probably do something with it instead of just forgetting about it in a week. Uh, I think he's on the call. Which Eric, Eric Cambra? Yeah. Cool, thanks Eric. Uh, appreciate it. No, this is great work, Ben. Uh, it was really exciting to see it come together. Uh, I, I posted a question in there about um, uh, how you see the pack evolving, um, how, how you see the data gens evolving um, around the pack and community contributions. I, I think that previous question was a perfect example of that where um, users may have something else they wanna test um, or there may be data sets that just there aren't good samples available out there and how can, you know, how, how can others kind of contribute to help expand this? I think, yeah, you're definitely, definitely right about that. I think that you know, it, every, it almost feels to me like every pack is going to be almost kind of a unique use case, or maybe it's a matter of having to uh, expand, a, you know, have a bunch of different data sources contained within in that pack. Because uh, everything I did within the, within the pack that I created was very specific to this use case, um, adding those sources and source types back in. Um, but as far as, you know, sharing, I think the the actual sample data, um, I think that it, it it would be reasonably easy to do so, right? We're talking about CSV files at the end of the day. I think I think that is the only what thing that a data gen accepts. You can correct me if I'm wrong there, but um, you know, I think the big the big key if if folks want to contribute uh, sample data out to the community is to really spend spend the extra time to obfuscate that data. You don't want to create a different security concern for your company by leaking internal data into these samples. Um, I, the way I did it was pretty low tech. I just, you know, searched it up, tabled it out in Splunk and then renamed our, uh, did uh, not renames, but uh, I don't remember what it is, whatever you use to replace values in a field that I just started obfuscating you know, the name of our tenant and the IP address, you know, it was coming from a VPN IP when I did it. So obfuscate that IP address and things of that nature. Um, but I think otherwise, re really, this should be pretty, pretty safe to, to share uh, in most cases, especially with things like a password spray, right? Like a password spray is kind of a password spray at the end of the day. Yeah, it seems worth like having a checklist to publish about, yeah, here's what you should check before doing X, Y, Z. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've got logs for better or for worse that contain protected health information. So like that could get funky, but, uh, you know, anything that's PII, PHI, or, you know, reveals anything too, too sensitive about your infrastructure, you know, I, I think you have to use some, be reasonable about that, right? Like you might not want to say to the world, I'm using Apache 2432, right? But I mean, I can find that out by going to your website. So maybe don't worry about so things like that so much, but anything that's, you know, internal secrets, you definitely want to be careful about. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Um, and just unrelatedly, I had several people message me late into the meeting and say, uh, how do I, yeah, how do I get into the user group meeting? You, so if you're here and you got a link from someone, you can register for a monthly reminder from our own uh, our own email champion, Victor, um, there. And that way you will not have to last minute scramble for uh, a Zoom link. Um, thank you very much, Benjamin. Yeah, absolutely. Even, even uh, use the community calendar. I should just have that always showing up in the, as a second calendar in my outlook. I can see that uh, tomorrow looks like office hours is going to be about the new release, huh? Uh, yeah, it's like we timed it or something. Amazing, right? <laughs> so yes, please come to Office Hours tomorrow if you want to hear uh, the, the, the down and dirty on what's in the new release. I'm kind of excited. There's some cool shit in there. 
Uh, also, swearing swearing is allowed in our user group meeting. And uh, the reason I was laughing when you were talking about the new release is just today we talked about, yeah, we should upgrade. <laughs> of course, that's why, that's why we're doing solutions. it today, because we knew. <laughs> and then I said, yeah, but that means probably like right after we upgrade, they're going to send a new release. Out. Yeah, sure. <laughs> totally. All right. Is there an actual calendar published? Yeah, it's uh, it's in the um, it's in the uh, user group planning uh, channel, and it is as a topic, I believe. Cool. I can let me go get it, and I can paste it in here for you too. I'm nothing if not an enabler. I will enable you. Copy link. Oops. There we go. Oh, someone else trying to get in now. To everyone. Thank you. There you go. That you should be able to subscribe to that Google Calendar if you do use Google Calendar. Um, and, and if I you use you Outlook, can, yeah. Yeah, I think you can. You can use the ICM. Yeah, it's at the bottom you know, of the page. Or ICAL, or something. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's All right. Cool. Uh, I have to step away for a moment to do something to some bread downstairs, but uh, I'll be right back to do our um, dice related swag. Uh, raffle. So enjoy for a moment and I'll be back. So is everybody going to try to make it to the, to the alternate uh, location user group? Location, quote unquote, <laughs> on the 31st? I'm looking forward to that. Where's that at? Uh, it's the, it's the, and I can pronounce it because I don't deal with it properly, uh, but the uh, EMEA user group meeting. So the oh. Europe, um, Middle East, and Asia. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's right. Africa. Uh, to Africa. There we go. That makes more sense. Yes, that's, that, awesome. that, that, that's more of a time zone thing. Yeah. So that's on the 31st. I think it's posted in, in somewhere in Slack. It should be. Uh, if not, it's in the calendar link too. That. Yep. Although that one, I think, does not have the, the join link right in there. It has the registration link right in there, but not the, directly the. Uh, yeah. The Zoom You'll link. get an email from Victor about that with the link in it. We haven't got a regular cadence for that yet. We're gonna decide, I think. Oh, excuse me. Um, smell of bread always makes me sleepy for some reason. Um, so yeah, we'll decide probably at that meeting what our next meeting date will be and then do it on, uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, I'm ready to do the raffle whenever you are. We've got, we've got- I do need. Um, one. Let me do another grab of the because we had some people leave. I always take a screenshot of the of the list. I have to ask while we're in an interlude here. Uh, there's a Brian break on the line. Is that the Brian break of the Breaking Down Security podcast by fame? No, I'm not. But if uh, is there somebody with the last name of Break? Yeah, there's a, there's a security, security podcast. Mm -hmm. Breaking down security is what it's called. I haven't listened to it in a while, but it was good. It's good, probably. We're probably related. There aren't too many breaks running around. That's we were slacking in the back channel. Like, well, it's even spelled the same. We have to just ask. So, all right. Sorry to interrupt again. I'll be quiet. No worries. Like I said, this is not yeah. formal at all. <laughs> All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people. So right. D twelve. The D twelve gets some love. And uh, we've got actually we've got a, a new coffee mug and a pen and a t-shirt. And I um, I have a lot of All sizes right. for the shirt. All righty, here we go. Oh, you can is, hold actually, it up. A I, I can see it. 10, 11. 11. Rob Ball, who is one of the people who uh, asked me for the link late. So, 
Oh, did he, there you are. Yep. Uh, so DM me on the community Slack with your mailing address Woo-hoo. and your phone number, and I will send you those three things. Awesome. Let's do a few you. more. All right. Yeah, this angle is not the best, but uh, <laughs> it's a nine. A nine. Uh, Christian. I see Christian. Oh, Hi. Yep. I'm hey here. There. All right. Yeah. You know the rules. DM me uh, with your mailing address and phone number, although we'll not keep your phone number. This is just for the mailing. Okay. And I will send you, oh, and your t-shirt size. I need your t-shirt size. Okay. Please. Okay. Thank you. And same, uh, yeah, same for Rob Ball. Please also include your t-shirt size. And, uh, and all right. One, one more. Three. Number three. Number three is R. Saunders, who just turned on his camera like he knew. For <laughs> also, that's a really cool Good chair mind. you have in the background. <laughs> What's that? Very, your right. chair in the background looks super comfy. I like it. Oh, uh, that's, yeah. That's supposed to be for me to sit and read in, but it's really just for my cats. Yeah, I understand. I have a chair behind me. It's mostly for my clothes, unfortunately. Uh, so please, yes, uh, DM me on the community Slack with your... Oh. Uh, your mailing address and your t-shirt size and your phone number and I will send you a package. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Benjamin, will you please also DM me your size and uh, and your mailing address and I'll send you something. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thanks for presenting. I really yeah. appreciate it. That was super cool. Yeah, it was fun. All right. Um, well, I guess we will be deciding in the next few weeks what happens in the next user group meeting. Um, but it will be after the first EMEA user group meeting. So now there's competition, right. y'all. You gotta, yeah, you gotta we'll step up your game. <laughs> compete for topics. That's right. All right, cool. Anyone else have anything they want to talk about? Eugene, anything you want to talk about? No, I, I already mentioned the office hours tomorrow. It's always a good time. So yeah. anybody who hasn't gone to that should. Yeah, and those are uh, the invite for that. The info for that is also in the calendar. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel where we post the videos, you should and get yeah. your friends to subscribe. And we once need we to get, get to a hundred people. Yeah, and I think we're at fifty-two or something right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just told Abe to subscribe because he's like, "Is this meeting being recorded?" Abe, our new doc writer. Did yeah, he? Well, <laughs> Oh, he just showed up and then left again. Yeah, um, I will give you the link to the recording when I get it, and we'll get that posted. I missed wow. uh, Ben's talk because my internet was down. Can we get Ben to give the talk again here, real quick? <laughs> it only did, it didn't only take fifteen minutes. <laughs> I'll give you, it, uh, Ryan. You can have a private viewing if you want. Oh, okay. I mean, that's weird. It is. Where? Ryan is the uh, my Ryan and Rob are my co-patriots that cover my meds. So we're ah. the. Uh, Welcome, welcome to the Krivel community. As as you can tell, we're super serious. Um, so there's the link to the cha- YouTube channel, and if you subscribe, you'll get notification when it's posted. Right. Make sure to hit that bell. Is that what you're saying right now? <laughs> I'm not going to say those words, no. But uh, yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks All right. very much. Awesome. See you okay. next month or those who will show up at other meetings. See you then tomorrow. Ciao, everybody. Thank you.